welcome to Cannabis TV. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and I'm coming live from Los Angeles, California. We got the members of the band um, American Jet Set. Now, um, I love the name of the band. It's kind of, um, when I first heard it, got my attention, kind of got a, it's kind of a cool sounding name. Um, let's talk about the name, how you guys, because I know that's one of the hardest things to do is come up with a band name. I mean, back when we were naming the band, I was looking for something that kind of represented you know who we were you know we're kind of like you know um we're kind of sort of that upper middle class but we kind of sleazy dudes you know what i mean kind yeah. of you know just the, sort of the guys that kind of roll around in bars and have fun and listen to old music and all that stuff and american jet sex sort of hit that hit that vibe for us you know because it's all about you know having access and being able to get around but wanting to do the you know crazy white trash things that we do so <laughs> yeah. I, think that, I think that says it all Let's go around the room, Ian. Uh, uh, you are the singer, or who are you in the band? I sing and play guitar, yeah, absolutely. I'm Ian McGregor. Let me ask you, Ian, um, were you always a singer, or did you, like a lot of people, start out on a guitar, the guitar, and then kind of become a singer out of necessity, or because you were writing your own songs? Uh, yes, all that, everything you just <laughs> So I started yeah. off playing piano when I was a kid. My dad was a uh, professional musician and I just sort of followed in his footsteps. And somewhere around 14, I picked up a guitar and struck me was the songwriting aspect of it. That's that's what I focused on my whole life. And so I got you know, I got good enough to play guitar and be you know, the lead guitar player in a band or two here or there. But um, there was always room for the vocalist. You know, what I mean, like we were always looking for that guy. And I never really had much of a range, but I had a voice that could fit into different places. You know what I mean? Sure. It wasn't like, if you listen to, sure. our, if you listen to our records, I don't sound like other metal vocalists. You know, there's, you know, those guys are running around like, you know, three yeah. octaves higher than I could ever get to. But, um, but for us, it's more about the tone and the voice and the setting and the vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, let me ask you, Ian, um, in regards to that, um, um, were you kind of the guy in all of the bands you were in, let's say um, when you were coming up where, not necessarily you saw yourself as a, as a singer, but the other guys in the band maybe pushed you to sing like, hey, you know, out of everybody, you got the great, you got the best voice or you should really push yourself to be a singer. I don't know that it was ever the other guys saying you should do it. It was more like it just happened out of necessity because, I mean, the two or th the very first band I ever sang in was um, back in the 90s. It was a, a band called Crush Story oh. and it was that we were a three piece looking for a singer and uh, we were writing all the songs. I was writing most of the words anyway. And yeah, sure. so we would, we would do rehearsals and I would just sing along, you know, doing our thing. And I would mimic the guys that we kind of wanted to have, even though I didn't have the range, I'd mimic those guys. And, um, and it really just kind of came out of that, you know? Yeah. And when we formed this band, um, I had, things, so right? I, say again, it's like kind of the same thing with this band. Yeah, yeah, it was even weirder with this band because I spent 10 years in a signed band and touring and singing and all that. And I kind of wanted to just get away from singing. I wanted to play guitar for once. And, you know, this band started as sort of like, a, uh, you know, a bucket list band where we planned on playing with all of our favorite bands and stuff. It wasn't meant to be something we were going to do to the to the degree we're doing it now. Yeah. And so I just wanted to play guitar. And when we wrote the first record, if you listen to our first record, you'll hear that it's much more simple guitar. It's very sure. early, faster pussycat, maybe a little LA gun. And that's about the limits of my guitar playing, but that's yeah, yeah. what we wanted. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of came out of the need, the need for a vocalist. And that's where, you know, I just stuck with it. You know, uh, I, I was reading in the press release, your publicist sent me on the band that um, you guys were influenced by a lot of those 80 uh, rock bands that, that a lot of us grew up on. But um, Faster Pussycat is one of those bands that was mentioned in there. And I got to tell you, I'm a huge Faster Pussycat fan, but I got to tell you, I think that debut album is is probably the best uh, thing they ever put out. It's like killer. I think it really um, doesn't get the recognition it deserves, if you know what I mean. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I mean, when ships rolling in. I mean, like yeah. that song, by that that never got heard by anybody, but that's like the best, my favorite song on that record. Yeah. Um, but that, I'm a first album guy. So yeah. like anything you ask me about any band, it's always going to always go back to the first record. And you know why? That that's record... our first impression of, of those guys. I mean, um, you know. Yeah. 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 
Well, let's let's um go around the room now. Skins, I know you're one of the guitar players in the band. So, um, are, are you guys um all original members of the band? Uh, actually, I'm not. I'm, not. I'm, a, I'm the replacement guy. So, so what, what um, I've been in the band about a couple of years now. So, um, I mean, I feel original because I feel like we've done a lot. Sure. Uh, in the last couple oh, of years, yeah. I've been in the band, but um, there was a previous guitar player. That laid a lot of the groundwork and and uh, did a couple of the previous records before I joined, and um, and we're still doing some of those songs uh, from the back catalog, and sure. I, I I love playing those songs. And um, let me ask you, Skins, um, were you aware of the band? Like, were you friends with these guys before you actually joined, or um, how did you get the gig? Yeah, so I I've been playing around in a bunch of other bands, and uh, I saw Ian posted that they you know were probably looking for another guitar player and um i had uh i'd, I'd seen them before and and I, I i'd heard them before online and their music and uh i i was in other bands i'm still in other bands and uh, like i didn't have enough going on i i emailed ian and said hey uh what do you what do you think is uh is my style something that you're looking for and he said yes, definitely, and um, we set well, up we, an audition. And we knew the him. Audition, okay. <laughs> yeah, we knew was, of him. We knew yeah. of you. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as he yeah. said he was coming, to, uh, coming to audition or coming to play with us, like Ian was like, "Dude's in." Like, listen to this shit, and we play us some stuff. He's like, he already in. took one of his old pictures and put it onto the website. But you sealed the deal when, before you hit a note, you brought bourbon. <laughs> yeah, he, he came in he was like i hear you guys like bourbon he started handing out airplane bottles of bourbon it was like i brought beer is that okay and we're like yeah 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 so i so i, so I talked to ian and uh, i was supposed to audition on a sunday and um ian texted me on thursday and said is it okay if i put a, a press release that you join the band and i said well i haven't auditioned yet but Okay, you got it right. Hey, that's good. That's got to be ultimate um, feeling right there. Now, Jeff, um, let's talk about better who you are, and um, uh, you're an original member of the band, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Um, drummer, and um, I was in bands not of this style years ago, and Ian was in bands not of this style. We met that way, playing in and uh, like our bands were playing with each other. We kept in touch over the years, and you know, being friends uh, on. Some social media i was starting to get to know him a little bit more of his taste i'm like oh you're into this shit too oh right so over years of that you know i kept bugging i'm like dude we need to start a band we need to play the music we love and i pestered him a lot and then with him at without him coming back to me one day he came back and he's like here i wrote a record we're a band here's the logo here's everything we're meeting next week i'll bring a bass player let me ask you jeff what, what's that like you know it's a new world you know with the social media and stuff i mean um you know, the old school days, you would go down and you would um, you'd be hanging out to audition all day with among a bunch of other musicians. Um, but you meet this guy first on social media, you become friends that way, and then you actually meet him in person. I mean, um, what was that well, process we, like? Well, we knew each, we knew each other because our bands played together. Okay. But yeah. uh, all that, when all that fell apart, you know, I think he had friended me on MySpace because, okay. you know, I... My band was booking his band to play yeah. some shows, and uh, my space. <laughs> it just stayed. You know, we my just space. stayed. And, yeah, yeah, man, that takes you uh, back. Watching right? each other. Yeah. It, you know what? Shit, it was probably Friendster, right? That's how long ago it was, and <laughs> we just kind of yeah. remained friends over everything. And then, you know, after years of, you know, each other posting stuff about the music we love, we're just kind of like, oh shit, we could yeah. we could probably do something. I, yeah. I mean. He kind of called my bluff. I don't know that uh, I ever thought he would want to do it. Um, but he wrote the first record and sent me the demos and was like, is this what you're thinking? I'm like, let me ask yes, you, Jeff, as, as a thinking. drummer, are you a real physical player? Like, are you kind of a showman type of guy or you just kind of play whatever? Yeah, I like to, I like to, I like to play hard. Um, but I always, I always ended up in bands. I'm not to put any bands out. I always ended up in bands that weren't the kind of music that I would listen to on my own yeah. time. I ended up in a lot of indie rock bands, math rock bands, uh, punk bands, stuff like that. Stuff that yeah, I like, it's fine. But, you know, my passion is, is you know, 80s hard rock music. That's what well, I love. I think that's so, what I've always loved, and I never got to play it. When you're trying to make it a music business, that's a great way to kind of break in. You know, 
it's a great way to get gigs. I mean, you look at a guy like um, James Lomenzo, the bass player in Megadeth. A lot of people first yeah. heard of him, like in White Lion. He's done a lot of different types of things, and um, he's played with John Fogarty of all people. And um, I heard him in an yeah. interview talking about that, saying how people say, "Hey, you're a metal guy. What are you doing playing with?" John Fogarty, like, hey, it's a great paying gig. If you can get it, why not? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. And, and Kevin, you're the drummer, right? Or you're the other guitar player, I take it. I'm the bass player, yeah. Bass player, okay, okay. Yeah. So originally I started out playing guitar uh, many, many decades ago. And um, so I'm recognizing the Kiss posters uh, behind you. Um, yeah, yeah, so I mean, probably if you're a Kiss fan like me, it's hard to believe that, you know, 50 years of that, yeah. Yeah, right. It was like, uh, in, you know, fourth or fifth grade, I was like starting to scare my parents by coming home and asking them to pick up a Kiss album for me or something. And um, I'd been playing guitar, saxophone, a couple other things. And uh, over the years, didn't really do music for, for quite some time. And then um, very, very similar story. So that all ties together is uh, it was somewhere with Ian and he's ha hanging out and he's like, He's like, hey, you play bass, right? And I'm like, I'm like, no, I play guitar. He knew this, right? Because we had been friends for about uh, about ten years before that. I was his like utility guy. I come and see all these bands. I'd help with either the sound or I'd run a lighting board or just you know just help out, help drink with the band. And he's like, he's like, well, if I I bring, I'll give you a bass. You come put some cracks down for me. Yeah. I've got this album idea in mind. And then I went to meet with him and Jeff. Uh, but right before I went, my wife found the, the website and said, hey, you're already part of the band. <laughs> so yeah. we move fast. <laughs> you know, Kevin, oh, yeah. a lot of times um, in, in bands, the lead singer, the lead guitar players get a lot of the glory. But um, a lot of times, and many of my favorite bands, the bass player is kind of like the secret ingredient. I mean, you look at bands like Iron Maiden, Steve Harris writes most yeah. of the stuff, uh, Mickey Six, uh, Geezer Butler, a lot of people from Black Sabbath might be amazed to find out. It was Geezer Butler and all those early Sabbath albums that wrote the lyrics, not Ozzy. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I'm the, I'm the guy. I play bass. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm there to have a good time. And uh, I love hanging out with these guys <laughs> doing our tour stuff and uh, and making the music. It's uh, it's always been a, a good creative release for me. So, so, so are, are you, you doing hard part? Tight? Are you, Jeff, pretty tight as a, as a rhythm section? Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, over yeah. the pandemic, I learned to love him more. <laughs> when we were hosting this little tiny space, even though we were six yeah. feet apart, but we were facing each other. And it was the first time we really got to see each other play because we're usually, I'm facing out. And so I got to, I had a much more of an appreciation of Jeff's style after that. Yeah, and even though Kevin, yeah. even though Kevin had played for years, this is the first band he was in. So when we played our first show, that was his first time ever performing on stage, I believe. For a long um, crowd, wow. So being in a oh, band was a brand a new thing band. for him. <laughs> yeah, for rock yeah, I've played in uh, jazz bands, symphony bands, yeah. orchestras, things like that. But yeah. this was fun. I even got to play sax on a couple uh, couple yeah. of the albums. On That being the song. case, let me ask you, what was that first gig like? I mean, being your first professional kind of, um, you know, before live crowd, so to speak. I mean, was the show kind of over before you knew it? Were you just kind of... <laughs> it was quick. No, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was just different for me. Um, I was, I kind of was expecting it. I had, a, I think I might've had a shot of whiskey or two before I got up <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. Um, what was your first show, Kevin? I, uh, we played at the at Metro, Metro Gallery. Gallery. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, That's a good and thing. I think that was the, that was the, the set that, um, I think the first song Jeff goes to whack right into the snare, yeah. busted the head right there on the, like the very first song. First right? note, and we're like, first okay, hang on. on. And then we had to get another <laughs> snare. We had to like, wait, and we had to go find another drummer that had a snare laying around, but <laughs> yeah, wow, <laughs> I was wow. like, this is how it's going to go. This is great. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. I got to tell you guys, I've never heard of your band until your publicist sent me the press release, and it's like, um, I feel like, what a great discovery, because I'm an old school guy. I grew up on mu mu music in the 70s and the 80s. Um, this is kind of my wheelhouse. Uh, and, and I listened to the um, EP and it's kind of like, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a take back to like 80s, the 80s rock sound. But you know what? You guys seem like you're not apologetic about this. It's who we are. We wear our influences on our sleeve. It's just great music, you know? Oh, yeah, thank you. Man, thanks, man. I had a similar story to Jeff too. Like I, I this is the stuff that I listen to all the time. So uh -huh. to get an opportunity to play it and create it, it, it was really, it was a really good thing. And, 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 and I was read, reading you guys how cool that you got to um, play New Year's Eve and out the LA whiskey, uh, legendary whiskey go-go with LA guns. And yeah. it, I got to tell you a lot of stuff 
it's kind of got a sleazy kind of rock sound and it has a bit of a la guns influenced i don't know if you guys are all influenced by that but it's like i i kind of get that vibe in some of the stuff yeah i mean like the first the first record for sure go ahead jeff no, I was going to say that the night before that, we also played the whiskey with uh, Faster Pussycat. And uh, so, but those two shows back to back really kind of took two of our different sides of our influences and, yeah. and kind of combined them. So it was it was a great fit for the two nights. Yeah, yeah I mean- And in uh, fact, yeah. I know Jeff didn't mention this, but in fact, we rec- those two shows were recorded and we're actually putting out a live record that will be a combination of those two shows. Oh wow! Wow. So, how hard is that to pick? Um, to pick the best of those two shows. I mean, that's got to be quite a um, quite an ordeal to go through. <laughs> it's yeah. not bad because our our set's a power set, so it's not that long. So it's pretty easy to to trim out. And also, we only had a couple of alternating songs for each night, so it's really just a matter of what songs do we play better on which nights. Yeah. You know, yeah one I'm of my favorite. Cool, I'm gonna say one of my favorite <laughs> tracks is. Um, Black hearts and bloody bruises. I mean, hell yeah. I mean, uh, to me, that's kind of even got a rat, a, a rat vibe to it. And um, rats, one of my all time favorite bands. Oh, that's definitely. awesome. That, so, so, from a riff point of view, if you're like rat, that record, that song has a little bit of a you think you're tough vibe. Yeah. So, yeah. if you listen to that again, kind of think about that when you're listening. But, you know, the, the, the songs for the last couple of records have really been rooted heavily like the rhythm guitars at least have yeah, been yeah. really rooted in rat docking you know all that kind of stuff yeah and so what has been the response to you guys i mean getting those type of shows this early on in your career that's that's got to be a great thing because i know those are the type of bands that you're probably looking to play with because you, you that's a kind of your sound is a kind of a throwback to, to that era of um 80s rock music but again um no apologies because it's, it's great stuff and um uh, and I got to hand it to you, Ian, or whoever's involved in the songwriting, that um, the, the lyrics and everything just, um, it's top notch. It's kick ass, you know? Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, the, the thing to remember, we've been doing this for five years now. So oh. it would be easy to say, oh, you yeah. know, we've been doing this and, you know, and it was a surprise that we kind of made it. That we've been kind of plugging away at this and working to get those shows. I mean, those aren't just falling in our lap. We oh, sure. I mean, very, uh, very hard. Yeah. I'm sure that's the case because, you know, anything worth any, any, um, anything, you get it like through hard work. I mean, there, there are some bands that every, you know, maybe really been lucky, but, um, you know, band like this, I mean, it's just kind of like you said, you get out there, you do shows, plug away, you get the music out there. Um, yeah. It's not, it's not going to come to you, but um, you guys got great songs. And I think, any that's key for any band to really have any kind of success you got to have great songs you know yeah. yeah one of the things too i think <clears throat> i think and maybe ian or jeff could touch on it is that we can uh cater a little bit better too depending on you know who we are like we said we we played a couple of songs different for the faster of the night before we played with la guns just because we knew the crowd might be slightly different and we, we have quite a laundry list of of you know some of those folks that we've played with and we're able to cater the song. So, you know, might not be the same set all the time, but yeah. we want to make sure we have, we fit in a little bit tighter with what we're, what we're paired against. Yeah, that's a great point because I heard like you also done shows with like Jack Russell's great white and um, think, yeah. original voice of great white that um, he's one of my all time um, favorites still out there do- get doing it. You know, um, they've got a great, amazing. Band, so, um, I was just going to say, yeah. you guys are, you, you guys are on the way up, <laughs> way to go. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thing. and it's it it's come like that it's and even the bigger differences we played with uh with living color uh-huh. uh you know different different styles and we have to look at the set list and go all right we yeah, are playing yeah, cool. to we're but playing to yeah, our yeah. fans but we're playing to their crowd so we want to make yeah. sure that we're, we're playing what we think that they want to hear and we're going to do the best that we can at it and and win them over as fans and that's yeah, what's, yeah. and i that's what's happened. To do as many interviews like this as possible because you know one thing that's really impressed me today um besides digging the music and and stuff is um this interview a lot of times you'll get one person from a band maybe two doing all the interviews i dig the fact that everybody's here today you know able to do it it's not always possible you know people have scheduling things but i i I dig it because we get more than one guy's perspective and i think we're all in different states right now too 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. yeah, we are. I got Florida, Florida Kevin, Maryland, Kevin Virginia. And Kevin so let's talk about that because, you know, in the I was reading up on the band that you guys supposedly were originally from the East Coast. Now, um, was that the case when the band first came together? Or it sounds more like you guys are from. So how did the band get together being so well, spread out? Well, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia are basic. They're all connected. Uh -huh. It's, you know, they call it the DMV. Sure. Um, you know, I may be in Maryland. You know, Skins lives up closer to Baltimore. And then you got these guys in D.C. and Virginia. I mean, on a bad traffic day, one of us might drive an hour and a half or two hours to get to rehearsal. But it's all it's all close enough. Yeah, yeah. It just, okay. just so happens we played like 80 percent of our shows in California. <laughs> We're yeah, well, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we used to consider the band a Baltimore band. We gave up on that just because it really, you know, we're not we're not even in Baltimore. I mean, Skins is the only one that gets anywhere near the place. Yeah. And, um, I mean, we're more of an L.A. band at this point than we are anything else. But East Coast does it, you know, does describe us and what it kind of gives a, a vibe for, you know, where we came from. But honestly, we spend way more time on the West Coast than we do on the East Coast. Oh, that, that's very interesting. And, and you know, it, I mean, that's the more of a way bands are getting together these days because, I mean, I, I interviewed a band that um, they have different members. Like one guy lives in Australia, one guy lives in the United States, another person lives in Europe. And then they just, you know, when they have to do shows, they, they just meet up. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we're coming, I don't know when this is going to air, but we are Probably coming sometime back next up. week. But I'll let you guys know once, once I have a date that it's going to get posted. Yeah. Oh, we're coming back to LA in June. Oh wow! I'll have to hook up, hook it up with you guys, or have you come back? Um, yeah, definitely, because I, I have another show I do called "This Is Metal," and um, I'd love to have you guys come back on that because um, it, it, it's it's pretty cool. I, and I do it with the co-host, so um, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, Great. Yeah. We'll we'll be at the Whiskey on um, June eight with uh, Pretty Boy Floyd and Demals. Uh, we are wow, huge a, fans of both a, fans. Uh, what a show, you know, um, I've interviewed uh, Desi, the singer from Demals, a few times. He's a, he's a super cool guy. Yeah. Super awesome. Nice guy. We love those guys. Yeah. Love yeah. yeah. They're he's awesome. Got, yeah, he, Desi's got a lot of great stories. I don't know if you've ever had a chance to talk to him, but I, I mean, he was once also in, the guitar player for David Lee Ross's band. He was telling me stories about where he had, he had opportunities to, 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 to like audition for Alice Cooper and Kiss. I mean, just what a, what a cool guy. He oh, can, yeah. He's a phenomenal guitar player. Yeah, yeah. People don't know that about him because you know mostly he's known for his singing and songwriting. But yeah, um, he's a soup. He's one of those kind of um, really underrated um, musicians, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Great dudes though. Yeah, and so you know, um, I know the latest. I was reading the latest uh, EP came out on Valentine's of, of last year. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that dude. That was that was a really fun release because. Um, Jeff and I usually get together before these things come out and we kind of plot and scheme and all kinds of stuff. And we decided that that record, we were going to actually send out to all of our fans a Valentine's day card. And that whole, that whole EP is like, it's a pretty dark album. Like it's about bondage and God knows what, you know, there's all kinds <laughs> of stuff in there. There's like even a horror story. In fact, there's a, we, we did a mini horror movie. If you, yeah. if you look up our final yeah. girls movie, that's a that's a horror movie that's out there. But um we sent this card to everybody and it was like this happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Love kills. Happy it's Valentine's like bondage, Day. Bondage murder. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Exactly. So that was really fun, man. We and got, and we lo I love that record. Wow, wow. Well, so we had uh, the first thing that went out with it. Oh wow, you mentioned that you guys are gonna be playing um LA again in June. Um uh, was that be still promoting this EP, or what do you think you'll have a um, new release out by then? Well, and we, we had to have a new one. Out. Oh, I was goodness. just gonna one we had. Um, we also had a perfume that came out with the Lump Kills EP wow. that went out, a custom scent That's that right. we developed. <laughs> but also, uh, there's a new EP that came out, just a, a three song, four song, new one uh, with some older songs on it that just came out in. And they come out in December. Yeah, it was around Halloween. December. Wasn't it? Yeah. Was it oh, December? Wow, wow! Just in time for Christmas. I it's mean, called you guys the Grey Bell Singles. Oh, you, that's guys right. are, you guys are great at like marketing. I mean, um, you know, that's a great little stopping st uh, stuff for you know at the end of the year, yeah. uh, a Christmas gift for your fans. Hey, check out a, a new release from us. Yeah, we, yeah, we, a, a, we, a we did a Christmas song, song and you know, 
Yeah, one one of our local stations had asked us for years to write to put submit a Christmas song, so we finally decided, okay. Yeah, you know, I, I, um, <laughs> I, I got I know this guy Mick Michaels. He's a guitar player from in this band, Corners of Sanctuary, and they got this little tradition. They started um, releasing like a different Christmas single each year to the point where they now had enough to put out a whole album of Christmas music. And he's oh. telling me, he says, <laughs> you know, they're they're a metal band, and he said it's funny because the fans love it, and he said, you know. Every year, believe it or not, around Christmas time, the Christmas, uh, the Christmas music gets played more than our traditional stuff on the radio. People have a oh, real yeah. love for it. Big time. <laughs> yeah. But Jason, to your, point, though, <laughs> to your point though, to your point though, Jason, we've got we've got a brand new album coming out. It's a full length. It's our third full length album. Yeah. It will be coming out in May. And while we've already had this, the songs have already been written, they've already been demoed, we've already booked the studio, and we've got a big sort of announcement that's going to be coming out on the 1st of February about that record and also about the tour and the shows that we're about to do. So anybody that's hearing this that wants to check that out, if you're into Faster Pussycat, Rat, Dokken, Motley, all that stuff, check us out at AmericanJetSet.com, Facebook.com slash AmericanJetSet, and look for that announcement on the 1st of February. Well, we will we we will definitely have you guys back. I really enjoyed getting to know you guys today, and I like I said, I urge people to go check out your music, your latest EP. It all kicks ass. I mean, if you guys are fans of like '80s hard rock, that's what this is. They they don't make any apologies. They're they're very proud of who they are as as they should be because um, you know, just the whole band is on fire. I listen to that stuff, and I'm like, wow, this takes me back to what I was growing up on. You know, as that classic. Right on, dude. Motley Rat, L.A. Guns, Faster Pussycat, all, yeah. all that. And let me ask you, obviously, being an L.A. Guns fan, I'm, I'm sure um, you were so shocked and saddened here of the death of um, Steve Riley. Yeah, I mean, I had no idea he was sick or anything. Yeah, nobody so, did. I mean, skin's made. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Skins? Man, what? You were a robot. Oh, right. Well, um. Uh, any anyways, Good you guys, um, I, I'm definitely going to have you back, and this will be going up next week. I'll be sure to tell your publicist so you, you guys can share it all you want, and um, let's keep in touch, okay? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Thanks a lot, for having Jason. Me, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, we will definitely, I'll reach out to you guys. Uh, take care, okay? And best of luck all with right. uh, everything you yeah, guys man. Love you. Thanks, Thanks for having us on. Enjoy Appreciate the it. weather, and uh, tell on we said hi. <laughs> we will. Bye-bye. <laughs> all right.